So the last lecture. So today we'll talk about a structural estimation of dynamic directional uh, games with multiple equilibria. So we're going to introduce a new method uh, called nested recursive electrographical search, which is really just a, 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 a standard nested fixed one algorithm, but with a particular solution in the inner loop. Um, um, or you can think of that broadly speaking, where the inner loop is then the recursive electrographical search algorithm that we looked at li at in 20, lecture 21. Now, uh, this lecture relies really heavily on, 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 on lecture 20. So if you don't know about RLS, and if you don't know about the leapfrogging model, well, you would have to look at that lecture first. Uh, I'm assuming the familiarity with, the, with, with both RLS and the uh, leapfrogging model that we're using as uh, examples in the Monte Carlo experiments. OK, so this is joint work with uh, uh, Fedor Ishakov and uh, Dennis Christensen from UCL and, uh, and John Rust uh, at Georgetown. OK, so what we're looking at here is the estimation of stochastic dynamic games that has several decision makers or players that maximize discounted expected lifetime utility, anticipating the consequences of their current actions, um, not only by themselves, but also by other players, and, and how that affects um, both current and, and future uh, payoffs. Uh, so this is a model with strategic interactions. So they operate also in this stochastic environment where there's a state variable that's capturing the you know state of the state of the world, and that the the all the agents potentially can affect the the state variables uh, for not only themselves but also other players. Like an example would be uh, the model we looked at last time, um, uh, the leapfrogging model, where where you have uh, the state of the art marginal cost of production being as exogenous state, but then you have the the endogenous states being the marginal cost of the firms. Okay, so here the marginal here I could affect my only my own marginal cost, but I could I indirectly uh, by by uh, uh, um, basically choosing whether or not to invest affect whether the other guy would want to affect his own marginal cost. So there's like the strategic interaction. Or in the case in the entry exit model, which is very clear by Gide Gabiria and Mira, there was, a, there was an endogenous state that's also affected by the collection actions of the players there. That would be who is active in the, in the market. Um, that is uh, that is basically the result of the discrete choices of all the potential agents in the last period. Okay, so 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 um so so you know yeah. So we're looking at dynamic games, and we want to estimate those dynamic games. We want to estimate the structure parameters of of, of the models that's forming these dynamic games uh, using data on m independent markets across uh, t time periods. Okay, so we assume we have some sort of panel data. Um, and, and then also, uh, again, for each of the players' actions in each of these different markets. So we're going to have an explicit focus on multiplicity of equilibria, which is known to create a, a huge amount of problems for many of the different uh, methods that are existing uh, in, in, the, um, uh, in the literature. So uh, this is uh, what we are trying to do with this paper develop a new method that is uh, able to deal with multiplicity of equilibria when trying to estimate dynamic games. Uh, so naturally, since we have a, a full solution approach that can solve all market perfect equilibria for a specific class of games, the recursive lexicographical search algorithm, we cannot build on that. OK, but just let's just, you know, uh, uh, just remind ourselves about uh, how uh, what a marker perfect equilibrium is. Well, that's a strategy profile or pair of strategy profile and value functions. Um, so in other words, it's a conditional choice probabilities and, and the value functions are all the players that are active in this uh, potential market or competing in this market. So you got two constraints, which is really you know uh, the Bellman optimality and, ba and, 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 and the constraints on Bayesian-Nash equilibrium constraints in, uh, in these games of uh, incomplete uh, information where you're making expectation about what the other firms are doing and forming choice probabilities uh, to, 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 to make those expectations. And so the, the choice probabilities, again, they're determined by, by, by the choice-specific value functions and, and the choice probabilities your expectation or your beliefs about the other players' actions. Okay, so there need to be some kind of mapping from from what you think the other guy is doing into what your solver is doing, and all this stuff has to be um, um, uh, that that has to be uh, you know mutually optimal in all dimensions. Okay, both respect to the the, the 
the, your expectations about the other players, but also, uh, you know, Bellman optimality needs to hold. So this, this can be in very compact notation formulated in this, this way. And, and now you can also, you know, substitute these, uh, do the Hodge-Miller inversion and, and substitute these things into each other. If, 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 and then there'll be one set of constraints. You can form this in many different ways, but th 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 this is one, okay? Then the set of market perfect equilibria is the, the, the set of, uh, or the pair of uh, strategy pole files in for the forms of conditional choice probabilities, and then, and, and then the value functions, okay? That's satisfying the set of constraints. And now, since we're focusing here on multiplicity of equilibrium, it's very important to remind yourself that, that this sets of uh, this solution can have uh, these these choice probabilities and value functions. There could be multiple solutions for each player in each state. Okay, so it could be multiple equilibrium. Okay, so in order to estimate these models, we could do maximum likelihood using the data we have on the M, uh, the the M uh, independent markets from the T time periods. We call the data set. And it really contains an observable, an observable uh, uh, data on on the player's actions. So these, in this case, discrete actions, discrete choice, say on whether uh, to uh, invest or not invest in the uh, in the leapfrogging model, for instance. Um, and then um, here it could uh, it, it, the, these would be the observable state variables. It could be the cost of firm one, cost of firm two, and the cost uh, the, the state state of the art cost uh, of the uh, um, of the uh, machinery you could buy in Czechoslovakia. If you wanted to adopt the status latest state of, uh, uh, state of the art. Okay, well maybe not Czechoslovakia anymore because you know uh, it doesn't exist that country anymore. But you know some other country. <laughs> um, Okay, so um, so for a given, uh, then then what we usually assume uh, is that we that that one only one equilibrium is played in the data. Okay, um, and we can actually easily relax that if you would use our uh, recursive electrographical search algorithm. So what we do is for a given um, value uh, of the structure parameters, then denote PL and VL as a solution, um, as the Lth solution to the uh, marker perfect equilibrium. Okay, so there could be several solutions to these sets of equations, sets of nonlinear equations, and uh, we index each of the solution with with L. Okay, then the likelihood function is uh, for a given set of structure parameter the maximum over all those different um, potential different equilibria. So we're maximizing with respect to the equilibrium selection, um, the, uh, the log of the choice probabilities uh, for all the different, uh, for all the different players at all different markets at all time periods, okay? Um, the log of the probability that you, uh, of the observed actions uh, conditional on the observed states. So this is well pretty standard, but 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 using the choice probability from the Lth equilibrium, and so we're taking here a maximization with respect to all the Markov perfect equilibria in the solution that you get uh, when you uh, take the the um, uh, the Bayesian Nash equilibrium and and uh, Bellman uh, uh, um, equality constraints here um, at this set of parameters. Okay, so. Uh, um, and that means that you, in principle, need to be able to calculate all the solutions to uh, to uh, find all marker perfect equilibrium in order to evaluate and exhaustively evaluate this uh, max operator here. Okay, that would be the brute force. Just calculate all the possibilities and take the max of them. Okay. So it has been stated in the literature that if you want to do NFXP maximum likelihood then you need to be able to calculate all marker perfect equilibria. I would say it's enough to calculate any marker perfect equilibria, okay? which is, uh, you know, you need to be able to calculate the one you want, but not necessarily all of them. Okay. So the maximum likelihood estimator, well, that's just maximizing that likelihood function, which is like the profile uh, max over all the equilibrium selections. Okay. So, Maximum likelihood is efficient, but as you can see, pretty expensive. Okay, especially if you um, 
require that you calculate uh, all the marker perfect equilibria. And like in the example we looked at last time, where there was 192 million equilibria, even for a small uh, disc uh, rough discretization of the model, well, then calculating 192 million equilibria is, is pretty a pretty daunting task um, for each time you evaluate the likelihood function. So maybe we can do something which is a little bit more clever. Um, well, the, the good thing is, if you do maximum likelihood, it's efficient, although it's more, uh, um, computationally expensive. It requires a full solution approach. If you want to implement a nested fixed point algorithm version of it, or we can do MPEG like we've talked about previously. Okay, so there exist uh, so several solution approaches. There's all, all old solution homotopy approach, but then we have some problems. If you have really a lot of equilibria, there's a lot of um, different uh, uh, homotopy path to trace out, and there's just too many bifurcations along the path. Uh, I talked about that at the end of, of the previous lecture. Uh, so we're going to base our, our maximum likelihood estimator on the recursive lexicographical search algorithm that pub published in Restart in 2016. Um, so that's what we call the you know nested likelihood nested uh, fixed point approach to structural estimation with maximum likelihood. Uh, that's that's uh, that that's what we would do. Okay, what what this should be is you should not have any problems with dealing with multiplicity of equilibria. It should be robust to inclusion of that. Okay, so so in other words, this max should work. Okay, otherwise it's uh, it's not really you know the maximum likelihood estimate. Okay, so um, um, then there's the two-step estimators. They're fast to compute, but potentially finite sa large finite sample biases. We've not we discussed this last time. Uh, we're going to compare with some of them. Okay, and, and here's a bunch of references. Uh, um, essentially, they're just based on the idea that you first go out and estimate the conditional choice probabilities. Then you 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 basically um, put those put those estimated uh, choice probabilities into the set of const uh, constraints here, and that simplifies the problems greatly. You can combine them with the Hotz-Miller inversion, so you get a choice mapping from choice probabilities to choice probabilities, or you know the 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 uh, the best response uh, mapping. And this is uh, uh, this for, for for instance allow you to do two step uh, pseudo maximum likelihood estimator like 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 it's done here, and then this is like the the policy valuation operator is substituted into to this uh, um, uh, into the uh, Bayesian Nash equilibrium constraints, and then you essentially just have a mapping from uh, choice probabilities to choice probabilities, and and since you can estimate those guys here, everything just boils down to essentially doing a, a static logit uh, with uh, uh, based on some you know some generated uh, uh, variables. So um, based on the hot smell. So that's that's very simple. It's it's fast. And it doesn't have to, uh, as long as you are able to really get good estimates of the CCPs, well, then this is also robust to the uh, to the uh, inclusion of multiple equilibria, as long as they're played one equilibrium in the data. OK, so then there is, uh, uh, there is a problem with the uh, f uh, with the final small sample bias, but then the, the, the nested pseudo likelihood should bridge the great gap with this uh, between efficiency and computational tractability. Uh, um, turns out that this is unstable under multiplicity, and I think we have looked at this uh, several times. Okay, so uh, especially when you have when you have multiplicity, there's a good chance that there are some unstable equilibria. You could get, get knocked into the wrong equilibrium, uh, and it's really hard for the algorithm to actually uh, to improve on the estimates. Of course, if you are if your first step estimates are really close and you are in, within the domain of attraction uh, and you're looking for a stable equilibrium and the uh, the NPL operator is stable, well, then it would improve. Um, but but that, that there that are some that that's the conditions for this to work. And Victor is working on this um, on improving on improving uh, this um, in some recent work. Uh, uh, not relying on the successive approximations, but using uh, more like a, a gradient-based or Newton-based uh, methods for finding the fixed point of the MPL mapping. So uh, that has better properties. But, but we are not improve. Uh, in, we are not um, um, making the uh, any experiments with that here. But but you know, in the short version is it's, it can be unstable due to multiplicity. Um, 
And then there's MPEG, uh, like we've looked at in Eastern Alliance Sue's paper, um, that reformulates the problem as a constraint optimization problem. And, it, and they argue that this should not be affected by multiplicity, and, and especially it doesn't have the problems with with the likelihood function being non-differentiable and so on. Uh, so everything is, is, is smooth and, and you don't need to f calculate all the macro-perfect equilibria. You just have to satisfy the constraints that that gives those, um, that implies those uh, uh, macro-perfect equilibria. Uh, and th those constraints only need to hold at the maximum, not at IGT iteration. So this sounds really promising, but there is a catch to it. it, it it's not really actually working in the cases where there's a lot of multi multiple equilibria if you don't have really good starting values that give you within this, some domain of attraction and allows you to find the actual the global maximum. So, so what you would do is, you know, here you would maximize the likelihood function um, or augment the likelihood function where this likelihood function is function only of the CCPs. Um, and then... Uh, with respect to the structure parameters, the CCPs and the value functions, subject to the constraints that these, uh, you know, the Bellman equations and the Bayesian Nash equilibrium equations, they are they are holding. And you can form these equation these constraints in several different ways. This is one of them, the one that Aston Lyon Sue is doing. We actually show you can pr improve on that by 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 using the Hotz-Miller inversion to structure that and and make the number of variables smaller, so you can you can you can get rid of the B in here, but still you have a high dimensional constraint optimization problem. Um, anyway, so what we do in this paper is we propose a robust and computational feasible maximum likelihood estimator for directional dynamic games um, that are finite stage stochastic games with a particular transition structure. Um, we looked at uh, that last time, you know, the state variables, uh, the state variable process needs to be directional. so. Uh, there could be no loops, uh, and and uh, and the and there has to be the strategy has, has to imply a consistent uh, partial order on of the state space. Uh, it, you know, roughly, state space just can only move in one direction. Okay? And you can also think of it in a, a slightly different way. If you look at the the controlled uh, transition matrix, which is like the or the unconditional transition matrix for the uh, state variables, where you have taken into account the the uh, choice probabilities of, of the players and all the different potential actions, then that transition matrix from states today to states tomorrow, that need to be a triangular matrix, okay? If that's the case, then you can do backward induction on the on that state space for a given equilibrium selection. Okay? Um, and and that's, that's another way to see directionality. Okay, so um, given directional games, we can then... Um, um, solve these models with RLS. So what we do is then we rely on RLS, which is a full solution algorithm that probably compute all market perfect equilibrium under certain regularity conditions, um, and then employ combine that with uh, a smart, discrete programming method called branch inbound to maximize the likelihood function over a finite set of equilibria. So, so normally when we maximize the likelihood function, we maximize with respect to the structure parameters, which is like, you know, of maximizing some uh, continuous uh, likelihood function with respect to those parameters, varying them continuously. This is not what we're going to do here. No, we're going to maximize with respect to a finite set of equilibrium selection rules, right? Equilibrium number, is it equilibrium number one, two, three, or four that maximizes the likelihood function? Okay not equilibrium one and a half, can't be done. Okay, um, okay so to do that, we employ uh, discrete uh, uh, programming uh, called the branching bound algorithm. Uh, and we'll provide some on the column. Uh, what we show is that, that our method is fully robust to multiplicity of equilibria, and we can relax uh, the single equilibrium in the data assumption. Um, and it's actually also uh, uh, work. So it's also working for models with mul uh, with um, uh, multiple equilibria played at uh, with with in the model where, where different equilibria could be played at different markets. So that's not really a constraint, a com uh, computational constraints. Okay. Uh, so we can relax that assumption quite easily without you know totally blowing up the comput comp comp computational complexity. Um, 
and then we show how this branching bound can use to um, estimate the model. Okay, so here, here, here it is uh, in, in a nutshell. So there's an outer loop that search over the parameter space. So we, we maximize the likelihood function with respect to theta. And then in order to express the likelihood function, there's an inner loop. Now, no, there is no dependence here on equilibrium selection. We assume when we evaluate this likelihood function that we found the right equilibrium uh, to form the uh, conditional choice probabilities that enter into the likelihood function. Okay, so the inner loop is taking care of that. That's maximizing the likelihood function with respect to the equilibrium selection. So it's like a profile likelihood or the upper envelope of those equilibrium specific likelihood functions uh, when you, you will get at parameters uh, theta. Okay, so here recall the PEL that was the choice vector of choice probabilities for the ELF equilibrium. So we're going to max. Uh, um, uh, take the max with respect to the, the equilibrium selection L uh, across um, all those different equilibria and then calculate for each of them um, um, the log uh, of the uh, likelihood associated with that particular equilibrium PL. Okay, And, and then that's that just choice probabilities evaluated at the uh, for, 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 for the observed action conditional on the observed state, okay? You can think of this uh, max of the function on a discrete set organized into the RLS tree that we looked at last time. Remember, in the RLS tree, there's a branching for each time there's a new potential equilibri uh, uh, equilibrium selec selection at a, a point in the state space. So there's all these stage game equilibria where so where we have these where there could be in the leapfrog model it could be one three or five uh, branching uh, or uh, uh, stage game equilibria at each state and then the, the tree will branch in five different uh, ways and there's five different uh, equilibrium selections in each tree so that that kind of uh, you know makes the number of equilibria uh, grow like, anyway so we'll look at that um, uh, again. Okay, so here's the Lan and Doing. Um, the, uh, they they uh, proposed this branching bound method in Econometrica to 1960. So this is a and this is not by any means new. Okay, and it's existing it's existing knowledge. It's really powerful, but uh, it's uh, this is an old method. Okay, so this is we're really just taking off the shelf methods and adapting to 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 our case here. Um, so uh, it's an old method for discrete uh, programming problems that that relies on the following. So you for, it works on on a tree of subdivisions of the sets of admissible plans or uh, admissible equilibrium uh, selection uh, or equilibrium um, uh, paths. Okay, um, and then uh, so if you remember the the RLS tree from last time, that's really the tree we're looking at. Okay. Um, and then it requires us to specify a bounding function that rep best represent the um, the ob objective function on a given subset uh, that represent the best attainable objective on a given subset of the branch. Okay, I think actually at this point um, uh, I may want to go or, or further here. You just look at the, the here's the RLS tree. And what, what, what I'm talking about here is that you can calculate each point here, or each number here, point, refers to a point of the state space. So you can calculate basically the likelihood function on a subset of the state space. Okay? And then that tree, in that tree here, uh, you, you, you get a partial likelihood uh, um, for, for, for every time, for, for every point you go to the state space, for each branching you do for different types of equilibria. So here, each branching here corresponds to different uh, equilibrium selection at, at, at a given point in the state space, or stage game equilibrium selection. So that forms this RLS tree that you've just seen. Okay? What you can th then do is you can calculate the RLS, uh, uh, the, the, the partial likelihoods at each of those branches, and then figure out what is the smartest way to climb up the top of the tree? Okay, uh, to the leaves of the tree, in in in, in some sense. Okay, uh, the likelihood is, so say, determining the height of the tree. You want to go to the top of that. 
So, so if you go back here to branch and bound, it's really like you form this tree of subdivisions, which is corresponding to the RLS tree in our case. And then you specify the bounding function, which is the partial likelihood um, uh, formed on only a subset of, of, that, of that tree, uh, on a given sub or, uh, subset or branch of that tree. Um, and, 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 and that's a partial likelihood, okay? I'm gonna, you know, show you in a second what it is. Okay, um, and then you can dismiss uh, subsets of of plans where the bound is below the current best attained value of the objective. So what you need is to you need to maximize the likelihood function. So if you say you know the likelihood function, your best guess is uh, currently is uh, you know minus ten. Then anything below minus ten, you don't need to explore that. And that's a whole idea about the branch and bound algorithm. I'm gonna show you. You're gonna go back to the tree and show you how it mechanically works, but but in some sense it's a pretty simple idea. Okay, just climb up the tree if you know that uh, that you have been at a leaf at the at, at the end of a tree that was so high, and you now um, uh, you can see that you you will never be able to. Uh, uh, we, we go go higher by climbing up uh, a particular uh, branch, then there's no reason to go there, okay? Because, yeah. Because the, I mean, it's like uh, the tree is a little upside down here because the bounding function is really downward sloping. The likelihood function, as you get further and further through the leaves, it's like, you know, you're climbing further and further down, okay? So it's like you're crawling, crawling trees uh, from, from, uh, uh, with the, uh, from the, uh, uh, in a way, upside down. Okay? Anyway, this is uh, uh, maybe a little bit philosophical. Um, but I like to think about crawling trees. Um, okay, so let's talk a little bit about the brain theory of branch inbound. What it does is really, uh, you know, we want to maximize the like likelihood function um, here, subject to um, uh, that um, the, that you you are uh, 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 selecting um, um, over all the different branches on the tree. Okay, so anyway, I'm going to specify that uh, 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 very clearly uh, later. Okay, so this is the objective function, which is a likelihood function, uh, but it can work, or the partial likelihood function that works on the entire tree. Okay? And then what you do is this uh, tree, or the set of uh, feasible plans, can be partitioned into a bunch of subtrees, and, and that uh, can again be partitioned and, and, and gradually refined. And this is exactly what we have in the RLS tree. So here's a picture, right? So you got the, the this is the entire tree, it's omega, but then you can make uh, uh, subtrees or like subgames um, that that uh, uh, that you can then again further partition. Um, and, and then each branching here corresponds to some equilibrium selection, right? And, and, and then each uh, layer here corresponds to a point in the state space. Um, and this is exactly what we have. What we want to find out is what is the right way through the tree? What is it that maximizes the likelihood function? Which, which path should you take? Which path is, taking, is maximizing that function over this tree omega? Which x should you go uh, through? Okay. To figure out how to do that, well, you need to know not only what the uh, likelihood function is at each of the points, but you need to how it develops. And that's called uh, the bounding function, or and our bounding function is going to be the partial likelihood. Okay. So the properties of the bounding function is really that the bounding function should be monotone um, uh, for this branch and bound algorithm to work. Okay. Um, and and then it, it, this this bounding function is just a function that that uh, that you know uh, that's a mapping from the subsets these subsets uh, of of the branch uh, to the real line the likelihood function uh, the likelihood value or partial likelihood value in our case. Um, if you reverse these inequalities, then you turn the maximization problem into a minimization problem. 
Okay, so so in our case, we would want the likelihood function uh, um, to be uh, falling uh, since we want to maximize the likelihood function. All right, so here's here it is uh, in current terms of the nested recursive electrographical search algorithm. So the branching that's the RLS tree and the bounding that is uh, the partial likelihood calculated on the subset of states um, where um, for, for in, 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 a, in, a sub, in, in only a subset of the states, just like uh, um, uh, like like here, right? So you, you calculate the uh, subset of states, and I'm going to show you just uh, in a, in a second. Okay, the so you only calculate it for for part of the state variables. Now, if you go and, and do that and organize the state variables, just like we did in the, in the RLS algorithm, and then just recursively add more and more and more data as you do go through the RLS tree, then that function will always decrease because you add more data into a likelihood function. Well, since you're not going to get a 100% a probability, um, um, then it's just going to fall over and uh, uh, just just going to fall as you take the log of that probability, right? So you add basically a bunch of negative values, okay? Because probability is up between zero and one. So this will work. Uh, so so basically, you mon this partial likelihood is monotonally declining as we add more and more data, and equals to the full likelihood as you get to the leaf of the tree. Okay, this is what I've uh, uh, you know. Illustrated here, if you go all the way through, through the leaf of the tree, you're going to end with uh, to a point where you can't get any further. So then you have evaluated the um, the basically the partial likelihood, evaluated that at all uh, different states for a particular equilibrium selection. Well, that is the actually the, the likelihood, right, for that particular equilibrium branching or equilibrium uh, branch. Anyway, maybe we should put some. I mean, here are the numbers here. They, de they determine where you are in the tree. So this is this the um, the this is essentially the the absorbing state of the game. Um, the uh, in, in the context of the RLS uh, or the leapfrogging model we looked at last time, that would be where both firms have invested in the state of the art, and then the state of the art is at zero, remarkable cost, and. Um, and this would be the top of the game, the apex of the pyramid, where none of the firms have invested and the state of the art has not yet improved. So we can uh, we'll go back here, you know, if you remember, uh, this is a recursive structure of the state space where if we were to do RLS, we would start backwards from the absorbing state of the game and then we would sol solve the, the model there and then you could just solve backwards this way. We did that all the way to the top of the apex. And, and so here, each point, uh, each number here corresponds to a point in the state space. And here is an example with 14 points corresponding to uh, the, the state of the art cost being discretized into three different values that give you 14 combinations where, uh, uh, in, in the leapfrogging game, where you have three, three state variables C1, C2, and C. Okay, but, but remember one that means top of the pyramid, uh, 14 that means uh, the absorbing state. And that's where you start your RLS algorithm uh, when you want to solve, and um, uh, yeah, and then you go go back go backwards from there. But then when you do the RLS, well, then you do the branching from the opposite direction, which is what we do here. Okay, so um, so here's the RLS tree. So the uh, we start here from from number fourteen, right? And then let's go back. So this is where we, we start, right? And then, you know, it, these last these, here corresponds to the edges of the game. That's where none of the firms have invested. There can only be a unique equilibrium in those cases. But then up here, you're in the interior points where none of the firms have yet invested. State of the art has improved. Um, and here there could be potential multiple equilibrium. So this is where the branches, the trees start to branching, okay? Depending on which equilibrium was played. And now, each, uh, what we do then is that we calculate, see, we cal can calculate for each of these different uh, state points, we can calculate the partial likelihood, and then depending on which branch you follow, you're going to get different equilibria, and therefore different choice probabilities, and therefore different um, uh, uh, likelihoods, 
or partial likelihoods. And so you can um, you can you can already see where we're going now, right? So this is um, this is we want to maximize the likelihood. So why don't we go follow the path where the likelihood is is the highest one? Okay. Now we, what we're we going to do first is we're going to go all the way to the leaf first, and it's called D first, and then um, calculate the likelihood, and then we can discard branches of the trees that are lower than that value. Anyway, so you see here, now we follow the first one, actually the one that had the lowest, um, no, the one with the highest uh, partial likelihood. Um, and then we get, again, another branching, because there could be multiple equilibria uh, uh, here as well, okay? Uh, multiple stage game equilibria. So depending on which one you select, well, you're going to get three different values of partial likelihood. So and one thing you see is that it is only decreasing. We had four point minus four point eight, and now we have uh, minus five two is the best one, and otherwise it's even lower. Okay, and this is how it's going to be as you add more and more data. You're going to get lower and lower likelihoods, and again, uh, this one be would be the best one to follow. It's the highest one. Okay, okay, you could actually follow choose to follow this path, but we're not going to do that uh, yet. We're going to compare with this later and come back to this and see if there's potential uh, potential better uh, worth going in, down in that direction. Because at this point, we don't really know if, if this branch here is going to be uh, lower, worse than this branch that we could uh, have up here. Okay? So we can't rule out that the potential likelihood following from this branch is better than uh, is is uh, is better than this branch up here. So we can actually extend this all the way to the leaf. And this is what we're doing, and then every time we're doing the branching, um, we're calculating uh, at each of the points here, we know what the partial likelihood are, and then we're saving that in some data structure. Okay, so now we know we're on the end of the leaf to the top of the pyramid, and now we know what is the, um, um, what is the partial likelihood, which is actually the likelihood associated with taking the first equilibrium you see uh, all the way here to the end. Okay. Now, um, of course, um, this is uh, this is working best on the slides. Okay. What we would actually do is not going this direction uh, when we do uh, uh, first, but actually just always follow the path where the equilib partial likelihood is the lowest when you first find the, the second one because it's you know, when, when you when you're when you when you're extending here, every time when you gradually uh, search for the tree, you would go uh, f uh, to find the possibly lowest record to start with. Because the faster you find a low value of the likelihood function, the more equilibria you could discard. Anyway, so let's let's continue. So this is the idea is very simple. You know, now you have a benchmark for how high the likelihood function can be. So there's no reason there's no reason to explore likelihood functions that are potentially worse than that value. But what about minus um, that is lower? Okay, so what about minus 10? Is that a, p a potential one to explore? Well, maybe we should actually look at it because it could be that we get a better uh, likelihood function there. And we, we actually do, so now we are able to reduce the likelihood from that equilibrium to this particular equilibrium. So you see, different equilibria have different likelihoods because they have different choice probabilities. They have different log of uh, log of likelihoods. Okay, and now we have a new record. So we are already doing good. We are maximizing the likelihood function and, and moving further up with respect to choosing the equilibrium selection. And then, uh, what about this one? Well, minus thirteen point seven. Well, that's actually lower than a minus ten. So why would we even want to uh, compute what the uh, or, or what the equilibrium is in that direction? Remember, equilibrium and, and evaluating the if computing equilibrium and evaluating the likelihood function takes time, so we don't really want it if it's not necessary. Now that we know that the likelihood function is only downward sloping, it's never in increasing. It can stay put, but if, if you put data into it, it's always going to decrease. So we can just completely rule out that there could be any, a higher likelihood function out here, and you don't want to look at it. So we just, you know, just complete nug out the, this one here. We don't need to compute that, even though there's a potential uh, likelihood to compute. Then we just look for values that are basically 
um, smaller than or uh, higher um, than the um, partial likelihood that are higher than the the current record, so that it cannot be reduced uh, any further. Uh, it cannot. Uh, yeah, yeah. So that if when it's reduced, it's not going to uh, fall below the record. Okay. So you can um, this particular one. Well, it's already below the record. So why one? Why don't want to continue there? No reason to do that. So we can knock out that one already. And then this one here. Well, that's a that's also uh, below. It's uh, smaller than ten point two. So you can knock that out too. Okay. This one here. Well, also a bad one, right? So we knock that out. But here, this is where. This is where I, I previously, you know, we could have we could have followed that path from the start and not thought about computing, computing this and actually we could have saved some time. But now we are coming back to it and um, comparing it with the uh, potential record, which is minus five point two. Okay, still still higher. Okay, partial likelihood still higher than the likelihood uh, uh, maximum likelihood so far. Um, but then we, 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 we realize after uh, putting a little bit more uh, observations into partial likelihood, calculating on a bigger part of the branch, we see, okay, we, we, we have to give up. So you see here that um, as you add more and more data, you would have to, um, uh, you would have to, 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 the likelihood function is falling, and then eventually you would be you will give up uh, or make it a new record. So that's how it's working, and you just continue there. This one we can uh, dismiss. This one is is a potentially good one, so we need to explore, and then we just uh, you know again we explore from the top. Uh, that's maybe not the most efficient thing to do. Ex explore the the one that gives the highest potential. Do that first. Um, because when you come back, you can immediately reject with a higher probability, and that's that's actually what we're doing. Um, and then, uh, yeah, this one we can reject, and then we just you know can through through. Oh, there was a new record there. So now things you can faster. You can see if the record falls, you can you can reject more and more branches. So it's all about getting this number uh, as as high as possible. So when this number is bigger. Well, then you're cl closer to the top of the maximum. Then you can reject more and more uh, um, branches uh, on the RLS uh, steps. Okay, and this is just how it goes. Um, one thing that you need it, that is very useful to do is when we this is just to evaluate the likelihood function. But now, next time you evaluate the likelihood function, you know what the record should be, right? You try a new set of parameters. If if this set of parameters uh, at, at, um, uh, that implies a new tree, right? But then you know well, you've already tried with the val value function, uh, or you already computed the, the likelihood function at another set of parameters, so you know next time you know what the record is. Okay? And then only if you find something that is better, then you, you, you update it. Okay? And only if you find something that's potential better, you explore it. So that's how it works, and it makes it Faster and faster, as you do more and more iterations, you're going to explore less and less uh, uh, potential equilibria in the tree. So that the last part, we haven't implemented that yet, but it's 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 obviously going to improve the the results that you'll see. Okay, so we're suggesting several uh, refinements. Like one could be uh, uh, now our bounding function is really a deterministic uh, one. You may use instead a statistical criterion. I mean, what what is it that we have here? These are uh, you know. Uh, a bunch of partial likelihoods. Okay, so if the record, um, I mean, what you could do is you could make a non-nested test or one, a one test or none. It's a non-nested like your ratio test of whether you're gonna expect to have an improve in the likelihood. Okay, by com simply comparing those uh, likelihood fun functions. Okay. What we what we were doing when we were like on the margin. Let's find one where it changes. Okay, what we were doing, we would say, okay, we will only accept um, uh, an extension if it's if it's smaller. Okay, but could we have rejected, or, or there's some we could have rejected earlier on? Maybe, maybe, um, maybe not any good examples. Maybe eleven here, we should have rejected that right away there because. 
it's uh, or, or 9.7 here, we should reject that right away because we know there's so much data in, the, in this area here. So we know it's in the, there's a good probability that the likelihood function or partial likelihood is going to decrease uh, so much below that value here. So in other words, the with the branch and bound, the bounding function, that's a strict criterion, but we could have a statistic criterion because this is going to have a distribution depending on how much data we have and the distribution of the data. And this is a little bit like uh, making a likelihood ratio test when you're comparing those two uh, bounding functions. And then we would have a, 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 a critical value, which is not zero, but is um, um, from some you know, chi-square type of distribution with the appropriate number of degrees of freedom. Okay. Um, and, and Dennis Christensen is working on the asymptotic distribution of, of those kinds of tests. Okay. So that's very promising. This Why we want to do this? Because then we can potentially reject uh, branches that we do not need to explore much earlier than um, than than otherwise if the uh, sample constraint is more strict. In other words, it's just like you're testing, making a test for whether the potential improvement uh, is is very likely. Okay, so that you don't have to calculate uh, the the likelihood function. So um, that's uh, that's that's kind of what is what it's doing. Okay. Uh, so we have the, all these different uh, choices uh, or ways to improve the, the likelihood function or the, the algorithm. Um, so now we, let's do some Monte Carlo. And here's a bunch of battery of tests we're doing. So we're looking at, at three different cases, roughly. Um, uh, one where there's a single equilibrium, both in the model and the data. One where there's potentially multiple equilibria in the model, but not in the data. Where in the data, there we, there, there's only played one equilibrium. Um, although the model can potentially have imply many different uh, equilibria, only one is, is played in the data. Uh, and then we have the issue with multiple equilibria in the model. Uh, and, and, and there could be different equilibria played at, for example, different different markets, OK? Uh, not in the entire data set, but, but the, this would be like having e uh, market-specific equilibrium uh, equilibria, right? Or you know, market-specific fixed effects that are um, uh, determining which equilibrium was played. Okay, uh, so integer value, fixed effects, if you will. Okay, um, okay so we're considering these different uh, diff different uh, environments, and then we're comparing these different types of estimators. So, like the two-step uh, CCP uh, pseudo maximum likelihood estimator, and then we uh, see if the uh, nested pseudo likelihood uh, NPL algorithm can improve and how stable it is. And then uh, uh, several flavors of, uh, of, of MPEG. So today, I, I've, in the set of results, I only show you that formulation the ASTM line suit does. But you can formulate the constraints in so many different ways. And, and we're actually in working on, on improving our MPEG as well and, 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 and limiting the number of constraints. And it can be done using the Hodge-Miller inversion and, and makes the actually MPEG more, more powerful. Um, Anyway, so but but yet uh, even with that, it's it's not solving all problems with, related to the issue of multiplicity. And then we compare these three with the NLS estimator. Okay, so uh, the results are you know I mean pretty much we've talked a little bit about this already. Um, but but in these different cases here, in the single equilibrium, um, uh, you're not going to have problems with multiple equilibria. And and most of these estimators, the two-step estimators, and and uh, well, they, they, they don't care much about the multiplicity of equilibria. Um, but so you were gonna you have to fa a fast algorithm a fast method estimator but 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 you have the problem with uh, with some uh, sample uh, small sample bias um, um, NPL. Well, our experience is that this is working pretty okay when you have mul uh, have a unique equilibrium and uh, if that equilibrium is a staple equilibrium, then it's uh, it's it's doing pretty good actually. Um, and then MLE, um, uh, the, the MPEG is implementing the MLE pretty uh, easily, and, and there's not any problems, uh, serious problems with local uh, maxima. It's really just comparable to what uh, M, uh, our estimator would, would do, because there's no maximization over the different equilibria. It's just taking the equilibrium that you find. Okay? Um, so so that, that cannot really fail, that maximization across a different equilibria. Um, I'm going to focus actually on, on these two cases. So I mean, this, these are the most interesting ones because uh, it turns out that MPEG would have serious problems with actually dealing with the local extrema. 
and the nested loop likelihood also fails to to converge and when there's multiple equilibria in the model it doesn't have to be in the data but but just as long as it's in the model uh, uh, you can get into problems with uh, with convergence due to this instability or convergence to a wrong equilibrium the, the one not played in the data you still have the small sample bias for the two step estimators so if you move to the case where you have multiple equilibria in the model and and also played a different uh, potentially played a different equilibria then you think about going the, do do the two step ccp estimate it's going to uh, make give you huge requ uh, data requirements right if you want to allow for um, um, if you want to allow for for f fixed effects and use the two step pseudo maximum likelihood estimator at at at, at each uh, essentially just estimate them separately at at, at each market uh, the the first step CCPs well that requires a lot of uh, um, uh, a lot of uh, uh, of data basically if so think about you know well, here I'm thinking about examples where there could be lots of markets like for instance joint retirement of couples if you have a data set with uh, with with a, like a million couples from the Danish register data then you have a million different markets. So even though there would put potential in each of these markets only be like maybe, you know, a thousand different equilibria to choose between, there'll still be um, uh, one million different uh, potential constraints if you want to do uh, MPAC, right? One for each market. So uh, when you go here, back here um, and, and look at what MPAC would have implied, well, then <clears throat> here's where is MPAC. MPEG is here, right? Then all these constraints, all these values going to be market specific, right? To allow for them to be different across all the different markets. So now as there's a million markets, now the, the, the number of variables is a million times bigger. And this means that the number of constraints is a million times bigger. And the coping of the constraints, well, now if you have, uh, say, uh, you know, a thousand states already, so then you got a billion, uh, a billion constraints and a billion variables. Uh, you know, then the the size of this matrix is completely. You know, forget about it on working on large scale problems with multiple different variables. This is not an all uh, an issue with the um, uh, with with the uh, with what with the nested recursive lexicographical search. It's really just summing over all this all these different data points, right? It's not like the solution of the model is increase is 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 getting bigger. Okay, uh, it's not the it's it's not changing the size of the constraint optimization problem or the op optimization problem because this guy here is still uh, has the same number of dimensions. This n number of equilibria is unchanged, so um, so that's not really um, uh, subject to the same type of problems. Anyway, let's go back to the Monte Carlo here and get to the results. Okay, I'm gonna. Um, uh, yeah, so so we're gonna look at a final example where you have uh, multiple equilibrium in the data, and uh, we're not gonna do any of these methods in this case because you would need huge re re data requirements for the two-step estimators. This is already failing uh, if there's for multi uh, once there's multiplicity uh, in in the uh, uh, in the in, in the model. So having it in the data as well, or uh, allowing different. Um, for different equilibria, put at different markets, just going to make it even harder. And I can't even wrap, wrap myself around how you would uh, do allow this for different markets. It would be like you need a, net, a different MPL algorithm for each market for each data point, and do several successive approximations in parallel at all the different markets, and then try to combine that and get one parameter vector. How do you do that? That's not clear for me. Um, um, whereas um, uh, that's that's pretty straightforward with the RLS, uh, and then of course MPEG has this cursor dimensionality built into the uh, the huge cursor dimensionality built into to the um, uh, uh, the constraints optimization problem, uh, because the number of variables just you know increase with a proportion to the in proportion to the number of um, of, of markets, and, and same thing with the number of constraints. Okay, so let's do the Monte Carlo. So, the, so, so the first, first thing first, uh, multiple equilibrium in the model, multiple equilibrium in the uh, single equilibrium in the data. Uh, we will look with the small. Uh, we generate data from the leapfrogging model from from lecture twenty. Um, so, two Patron Prize competitors that decide whether or not to invest in state of the art 
knock the cost of production. So it's a discrete choice, dynamic discrete choice model. Um, we discretize the state-of-the-art markable cost into three data points. That gives a state space of only 14 uh, data points. So we try to do this to just to, just to keep it manageable, okay? Um, and, and, and this is the, we don't need, really need more because this is what we need to generate multiple equilibria in this model, okay? In this case, for n equal to three, we can have like a, up to 127 equilibria, as, as far as I remember. Um, uh, sometimes it's fewer. It depends on the parameters. If if the mar if the market is not real that contestable, or if nobody wants to invest at this set of parameters, then there's only one equilibrium that is not invested. In. So um, anyway, so we have these fourteen different state points, and this uh, mm, so that everything corresponds to what we have ha had on the slides with all these different with the branching and and and, and these, over these fourteen different state points. Okay, so here's we you know we we make ten thousand observations per market uh, uh, equilibrium. We take a hundred random samples, um, one for each market. So I think this is the Monte number, the Monte Carlo, um, and then we, uh, you know, so so we we have just ten thousand observations in total, and um, um, and then. Uh, what do we have? Um, 100 Monte Carlo replications. Okay, so here are the, some results. I'm not going to spend so much time on the node multiplicity uh, since all the estimators is going to work nicely. And actually, also the, the experiment I made there was not really, or we made there, was it's not super interesting because it's 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 uh, from the simultaneous move version of the of the game and the way we. We avoided to have multiplicity was by increasing the ID extreme uh, the variance of the ID extreme value shock, and that uh, really not only uh, reduces multiplicity, it, it also reduces the information uh, 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 the useful information in the data that allows you to to estimate the structural parameters. So, uh, you know, essentially the likelihood function becomes pretty flat, and 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 so it's not uh, ideal for for analyzing that. The what we see, and and we've run, been running several Monte Carlo's, just didn't bring them here. Is that all these different estimators is not really, you know, have big problems when you have unique equilibria. So they, they have their different advantages that we talked about already, but but they're not going to be you know affected by multiplicity of equilibria because they're not there. So let's talk about the case where we have like a moderate level of multiplicity or a higher level of multiplicity. Okay. Um, and uh, and in the model and in in the data. Okay, so first, in when they're just on the model, and one is equilibrium in the data. Here's an example. It's only five equilibria. Okay, um, and 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 so um, you know the space that uh, of equilibrium selection roles that we have to search over is is just smaller. Of course, this is at the true parameters. So it could be that if you have starting values that are far from the true parameters, there could be more equilibria. Okay. Um, but um, we are trying here to, to create a situation where that's that's not uh, the, the, uh, that's not uh, uh, so much the case. Okay, but you know, what can you do? Um, you can't control what in direct uh, uh, completely direction the algorithm is going to search over the parameter space. Okay, so so um, um, what? So here here we have the MP uh, the, the MPAC, um um, implementation of the maximum likelihood estimator, and over here we got the, our branch and bound um, implementation of the MLE. Okay, so or NRLS, the nested recursive lexicographical search algorithm. This is this is what it is. Okay, and then we got the uh, uh, two-step um, estimator here with pseudo maximum likelihood, and then we got the Aguilera uh, Birian Mira nested pseudo likelihood. And I would say they're, they're doing pretty all right, uh, each of these three here. MPEG is a little bit off. The other ones are apparently doing a little bit better. But they're closer to one. Okay. So so what is going on here with this bias uh, in, in MPEG? Why is, why, is, why is that coming? I mean, the bias is not big, but it's, uh, it's, it's there. So why don't we discuss it? Well, what you see here is that the constraints, uh, which takes a form now on the Actually, the 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 policy, um, uh, the, uh, or the best response mapping, 
from choice probabilities to choice probabilities. So now if you're actually taking two constraints and, you know, inverted one of them, substituted into each other, and then you know, the, the Hans-Miller trick and, and did like in uh, Giddy Gabiri and Mira formulate everything in probability space. And then I just take the, the, the norm of that one. Okay. Okay. And, and so that should hold in equilibrium. So it's like a test of whether the model is solved. Okay. And the same thing where the, uh, the, the development equation needs to hold in choice probabilities, but in, in terms of the, uh, um, I think these are in, in, in working on, on the um, uh, choice specific value functions. Okay. And you see, this is just like, this is really precise for MPEG, okay? Because this is what MPEG is doing. It's, you can put a tolerance on how close should these constraints be uh, be solved, and they're going to be solved, you know, basically to to your chosen tolerance, and it's doing a good, great job on that, okay? Whereas the two-step estimators, well, you see, uh, because, I mean, this is this is generated from the, the, uh, the model that we're trying to estimate, so... Um, you know, we would hope that it would be able to actually let those constraints hold. You go and estimate the CCPs from the data and then uh, estimate the structural parameters. Then you know what those mappings are and you can put them right, right back in here into the, uh, uh, the, the best response mapping and then it should hold. Those as observed con or estimated conditional choice probabilities, they should be equilibrium choice probabilities, right? And that is true as the number of observations increase. Okay? So in finite samples, the, the, the estimated uh, equilibrium choice probabilities do not necessarily correspond to an equilibrium. You can see that here. And you can see it in terms of the choice probabilities and in terms of the value functions. Okay? So I mean, they, they, they are off. You're actually quite, uh, quite some. Uh, you know, the probability is 3% off on average. Okay? So that's, that's, uh, that's um, I mean, it's 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 off. Okay, here we have a lot of, lots of observations, but still, it's not there. He, you can really see the difference to MPEG, where it's it's a, it's it's a it's a tolerance that we choose to set the make sure the constraints hold, and 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 so we are imposing that structure from the model, which is also why we would get more efficient estimates if uh, we when you maximize the likelihood function. This is also the case for the branch and bound. Well, here the constraints must hold, right? We're calculating equilibria using the RLS idea, okay? Maybe we're not branching, uh, computing all the equilibria, but we're calculating an equilibrium. So these should hold, otherwise there's a bug, okay? Um, one thing that's different here between MPAC and MLE, uh, uh, branch and bound, is that we can see that the likelihood is actually smaller. Okay, here it's uh, uh, it, it's 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 higher here. But remember, it's negative numbers, right? So you know, <laughs> it's numerically smaller, but it's higher for branch and bound. And why is that? Well, the problem is that while MPAC is trying to maximize the likelihood function, subject to the constraints, it is not finding the maximum. Um, it is just finding a solution which is a local maximum where the constraints are satisfied. So in fact, we, we, if you take the results of coming out of, MP, of, 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 of the, of the uh, nested RLS or branch and bound algorithm, over here, if you take those parameter estimates and those implied choice problems and put it right into MPEG as the starting values, it's not gonna take any steps because the maximum like, likelihood is already maximized. And it's, it's, the constraints will be satisfied and everything because it's an equilibrium. So, so, um, so this is a, a, purely a result of um, of local maxima, okay. Um, and and say the problem here is that you don't really know whether you have found a local maximum or not when you're if you're not using the uh, branch and bound approach or nested fixed point approach. Okay. Here you explore all the different equilibria uh, or, or any of the potential. Uh, e equilibria that could maximize the likelihood function. You're not doing that over here. You're just essentially relying on good starting values and hope that it's not getting stuck in a local maximum. So this is the major problem with MPEG in case you have multiple equilibria that could be simply, uh, you can end up in a situation where you have, think you have a maximum, 
but you have a maximum on a wrong equilibrium selection rule. So um, in, in a wrong equilibrium. That's a local maximum. Now, this problem only gets worse if you have more uh, multiplicity. Okay, so this is the same as before, but, 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 but you know, uh, uh, it, it only gets worse. And notice, no, notice here, it, it, the Brangian bound algorithm is actually doing a pretty good job uh, when you have more equilibrium. And once we, we, we try to run the model uh, that, that are, are bigger, it is, I mean, it's going to take longer time, but it's not going to take. Uh, um, proportionally longer time as the number of equilibria increase. You can see that already here, right? Because here we had five equilibria, and now we almost tw double, double it 20 times, uh, or 20 double it, multiply with 20. But the computer time from, from here to here is not increased. Okay? And, and um, comparing the times with, with MPEG, well, MPEG is faster, definitely faster, but it's fast in finding the wrong answer. So, you know, what can you do? Um, um, so, um, but, but, but here, we did, if you increase, I mean, the number of equilibria when that increase, it's not increasing, it's not like it's, 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 it's twice, uh, 20 times as, sl as slow uh, because of 20 times as many equilibria. Because remember, when we look at it, we're not exploring all the branches, right? Uh, we are just exploring a set of the branches. And, and actually, as more and more equilibria there are, um, there will be more and more branches that are not really worth exploring because if the model is giving very pre different predictions uh, across the different equilibria and the data is very informative about what the choice probabilities are, you can immediately just discard a lot of those branches and not explore that. Okay, So, so here... All, uh, the, 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 this algorithm we're proposing is really powerful together with, 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 with cases where you have a lot of, of, of data that can be used to uh, disregard um, equilibria that are not in accordance with the data. So that's kind of the idea, right? Okay, so let's, let's do, I mean, these, what we did, uh, MPEG was actually doing relatively okay here. I mean, even though there's multiple equilibria. And, and, and so here's what I want to highlight. It's not too really bad, you know, uh, it, uh, MPEG certainly has some qualities here, right? It's also, a little, maybe it's a little bit simpler to implement. Um, and, um, and, and it's, it's, it also seems to be fancer, faster in, Although giving the wrong answer sometimes, it's it's sometimes it's giving you know pretty okay answers. Okay, it's not like it's crazy away from it. Um, and it's it, what we did here to actually make it perform reasonably okay in this case is that we give it very good starting values. Okay, and what here we can give it very good starting values because we can go out and use use a two step estimator um, to estimate the structure parameters and estimate um, the the variables in the constraint optimization problem, both P and V, we can we can get implied estimates from from the from, from those, right? Using the Hotz Miller inversion, you can basically calculate both P and V once you have um, you know uh, estimated the conditional choice probabilities, and then you have everything with also with the with the structural parameters. So in in other words, you got excellent starting value if you have lots of data. And the CCP estimators are working really well. You have excellent starting values for MPEG. So why not use MPEG to try to improve on the efficiency uh, to see if you can get the higher likelihood out of that uh, and eliminate some of the problems with the two-step estimators? It's not going to make the likelihood worse, like the NPL could potentially do. Okay. Um. um well, you don't have to, of course, uh, uh, accept um, uh, any uh, steps that are not improvements using any algorithm. But my, well, our experience for instance, is sometimes it's actually doing a better job in, in trying to, to find improvements on the likelihood. And and Victor, is, like I said, was is working on 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 uh, Victor Gilgabiri is working on 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 actually improving and making the NPL more stable. It has some advantages in terms of of computational time because it's not exploring all the different equilibrium. So if you have a good starting value, very good, because you have lots of data and you have a powerful two-step estimator, well, then you can use these two methods to potentially improve on the estimate. Or you can 
uh, but you know you have to do it with caution and you have to be careful uh, you have to know that this only works if you have very good starting numbers so this is what we're doing trying to see create a situation where there will be a finite sample most finite sample bias we're still using good estimates for the ccps uh, not to make it to completely break down and so we're using the frequency estimators there and for a lot of data but then we are just perturbing the starting values for the structure parameters just a little bit and um and, and see if we can kind of put it, push MPEG out of its comfort zone if you have uh, uh, too much uh, uh, finite sample bias uh, because of a lack of uh, observation from the first step or too big of a problem that occurs the dimensionality. And that's, that's what we see, okay? So what we see here is now you can get completely different sets of parameters uh, where, um, where you still have equilibrium, right? So the 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 equilibrium constraints there are satisfied. The likelihood, well, the likelihood is improved over the two-step estimator. It is certainly improved, but it's just giving a crazy parameter. Okay, so it's found some other set of uh, some other equilibrium selection combination of equilibrium selection and structural parameters that are far away from the uh, from 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 the true ones. Um, but is a local maximum at a wrong equilibrium. Um, and that's not good, right? So if you have poor starting values from the two-step es estimators, you can actually get something that is even more crazy uh, with, with MPEG. Um, the MPL, well, that's not converging. And look at the, this is the number of time it converges, only 30 times out, out of 100. Um, MPL also has problems with convergence five times out of the hundred. In those cases where it converged, it actually did did uh, did better than uh, um, MPEG in terms of finding the right uh, parameters. So it's not working crazy, but 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 only five uh, but only in five times out of a hundred. So so not a super convincing. But the branch inbound, well you got a hundred percent everywhere and and um, you know we know the true parameter is one, so we would say this is reasonably close to the true one. The likelihood function is bigger than any other for any other method. And remember, we're working on the same data sets, the same model. So uh, we should try to ma when finding the maximum the maximum likelihood. The al algorithm's ability to find the maximum likelihood. That's what we should also judge the the algorithm on. Okay, so then we run the set of the. Uh, uh, with uh, uh, multiple equilibria, uh, several different markets. We, um, and, and also multiple equilibria played in the data. Uh, the sampling is a little bit different and a different set of parameters. We have more equilibria and uh, potential equilibria in the model. So now there's not 95, but, but uh, 109 different equilibria. It's still the leapfrogging model with simultaneous moves. Uh, we asked trying to estimate just one parameter here. And analysis is pretty much nailing it. Okay, so it's uh, you know it, it's, it seems like uh, the bias is is on the order of what we had before, um, um, and then there's all these different mul multiple uh, equilibria. Okay, um, one of the things you want I want to highlight here is we can with since we have generated data we know which which equilibrium selection rule which number which equilibrium string. Uh, of digit that generated the data. Okay, so we can just see. Okay, what is the uh, RL, what is the um, NRLS? What equilibrium selection rule was used in the estimated model and in the simulated data? Compare that and see if that was the case. Did it actually identify the right equilibrium selection rule in each of these cases? And yes, it did. And 98.4 uh, cases, we had exactly the same equilibrium selection rule. Okay, you can also calculate like what is the Kullback Leibler distance between, you know, the true distribution, uh, true the distribution from the true model and and the um, and the estimated model. Uh, that would also give an indication that will also measure how well how well uh, we are in terms of the equilibrium. But but you can also do it in terms of the equilibrium index. Okay, and here you know this index is. Uh, uh, it's it's uh, you know since these are integer values, we can easily check if you have the same integer values if you have the same uh, equilibrium number. Okay, that happens like ninety eight percent or ninety eight point four percent of the times in our simulations here, and and so of course um, you're not going to expect a hundred percent in a finite sample, right? 
um, if you have like if you let the number of observations increase without bound, well, um, NLS will find the find it in a hundred percent sample cases because this maximization algorithm is global. Okay, it's a global convergence. So this is just a, a result of you know, you know, not having uh, uh, working with the population but with a sample. So we're pretty happy with the with these numbers. One of the things that we can improve, and actually not these are old numbers, uh, is the fraction of times so we are actually um, or the fraction of macroperfect equilibrium that we are exploring in total. Because when we did this first, we did not think that think of that we can just you know um, when we did the Monte Carlo here, this record here, we start restarted over all over. Every time you you evaluate the likelihood function for so for a new set of parameters, but that does not not you don't not need to to reset that every time. So you can have another record here that you keep us from 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 max over the previous iterations, and that would say that was if you had run this before another one, um, and and um, and you got say nine point five before the last one, or let's just say nine point six minus nine point six, and you go back. And, and then you can already see, well, you should not even have explored that branch, right? You should not have go all, all that way here because that would have not nece been necessary to explore because you know the likelihood from the previous iteration was uh, minus 9.5, which was already higher. So for this crappy set of parameters or this new set of parameters, you know, no reason to go uh, further from here. So all this stuff here, we would not need to calculate. Okay, and the same thing here, uh, everything smaller than 9.5, um, well, already here, this branch down here, no reason to, to, to follow that one or that one, okay? But we are here, we are following it more. So in other words, as you iterate over the and, and maximize over the structure parameters, then this record here would really be be tighter and tighter, the bounding function would be tighter and tighter, and you've been less, using less and less time when calculating the likelihood function. And this is what we have not explored in these results, this last thing. So uh, when you do that, you, you, the, the reduction number just reduces dramatically, and, and it reduces more and more as you get closer and closer to the maximum. I mean, just think about it, right? If you, for, if, for instance, if you do, you kept making a difference in the likelihood function just to calculate, say, at, around the top of the maximum to calculate a derivative of the likelihood function, and you already know what the record is, it's like, you know, you evaluated at, at a slightly different uh, parameter value, well, you already know what, what is the maximum. You can just disregard anything, okay? That is, uh, so in that case, when you're making very small steps, uh, and you have a very good information about what the likelihood function is, you, you often end up just going through uh, one branch, the one that maximizes the likelihood. Okay, so um, uh, let me just conclude. This is a full solution maximum likelihood estimator for dynamic games of a particular type, namely the uh, directional dynamic games. You, we do this by uh, using the conventional idea from the nested fixed point algorithm that consists of a nested outer loop or where that maximizes with the, the likelihood function with the structural parameters and then does some uh, full solution approach uh, in the inner loop there's a, a model solver and then the inner loop here is is also is both solving for the micro perfect equilibrium and selecting the equilibrium that is um, um, that is most in accordance with the data. So um, the brute force approach would, would be or less just combine in, in the inner loop. That's clearly inefficient. We could do better. That's what we do with the RLS algorithm. Uh, with the, with the, uh, that, that's what we're doing with the branching bound algorithm, this discrete integer programming. That is a smarter way to take the max over all the different equilibria. And we have various different refinements of how to max, do that maximization. Are including ba ba uh, in, in improvements uh, that are based on likelihood-based uh, tests, like the Vong test, non-nested Vong tests, so that the bounding function is uh, judged not on a deterministic criterion whether it's you know just one is bigger than the other, but on an, on a statistical criterion where whether we can test whether there's a potential probability. Or whether there's a positive probability, say you know you you you, you assign say um, uh, like one percent probability of not going in the right direction, or or even smaller than that, um, 
then you can you, there's a there's a good chance you can uh, improve on the estimator even or the algorithm even more by by using some like low ratio type of test. Okay, so we're working on on, the, on, on those further refinements. Okay, um, really, the, 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 but the basic version with branch and bound is working pretty awesomely, and it's not wasting time essentially on unlikely MPEs. This is this is the part that we want to improve on by by this further refinement of the bounding function based on statistical arguments. But 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 even without them, it's it's working pretty nicely. Okay, so then we've done this horse race with system estimators. Uh, it's convert it's confirming uh, some some intuition we had to begin with, uh, and it's pro and it's showing clearly that this branch and bound algorithm is very powerful in combination with uh, um, with with a, a state recursion idea or LS idea and 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 that's the uh, uh, likelihood. And, and, and that's the fixed point idea from 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 Rust 987. So uh, we have a pretty uh, stable uh, algorithm. Uh, the main limitation is that it works for directional games only, um, and that. Um, um, but uh, we are we're trying to see if we can work on uh, on on on, 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 on on relaxing that. For instance, we can have some non-directional states if they're exogenous, like we had in the um, in the leapfrogging model with alternating move moves, and then if you allow for random alternation, then and and use that to approximate some of the uh, simultaneous move games, then you can actually uh, use this um, approach even on games that have uh, less uh, directionality, because then you have like a complete wind up of the of the method. Okay? Of the game, so like Final Horizon games is a good example. Um, um, anyway, so let me just uh, conclude here and say thank you for for this year. Good, good luck with the term papers.